Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for more than 10 years. Today we're going to talk about such an interesting topic, the stuff at the RAS farm. Be sure to watch this video to the end, because first of all, we're going to break down in general what processes are usually carried out at a RAS farm, what do you need to do there. Secondly, we're going to discuss which stuff is needed to carry out these processes and works, what stuff is engaged at small, medium and large-scale fish farms, and in general, what are the differences between the roles distribution at these farms. And most interestingly, we're going to see how the stuff actually works at the RAS farm, a small farm where African catfish is grown. We're going to show you what people really is part of everyday work at this farm. So, here we go. Well, let's start with a little theory. Generally speaking, what work processes exist at the farm? They actually fall into five groups. The first block is strategy. You need to understand when you buy fry, how much and what weight, how you deliver it to the farm, how you distribute fry between the tanks, what weight you grow it to. When you sell grow fish, when you order a new batch of fry, also you perform feed consumption calculation, how much feed you need, waste calculation, developing feed logs, so all this we can a conventional strategy. The second important block is working with the fish, handling fish, it's feeding it, counting, accounting for waste, sorting the fish. This is managing fish purging and its shipment. Of course, it's coupled with fish diseases, treatment. All in all, handling fish is a significant block. The third block. This is maintenance of the farm and RAS equipment. It's monitoring equipment and its maintenance on daily basis. For example, draining some sediment from settling tanks. It's checking the operation of the system. That is, all those processes that do not require contact with fish, that require working with the equipment. The farm building. The fourth block is accounting. You need to measure what parameters, that is, keep records of these parameters. Also, you need to keep records of fish waste. It's indispensable to keep a feeding log. All that is accounting. And of course, this block includes fish sales, how much was sold, how much was bought. All this must also be attributed to this separate block. And the fifth and final block is administration and sales. Here we include accounting, dispatching fish from the farm, delivering stocking material to the farm, selling, packing, communicating with customers including wholesale ones. This is all about administration and sales, and also management of employees, if any. There is also a sixth block, which is equipment maintenance. I don't mean daily maintenance, but reparation works and troubleshooting. This also requires attention. Now let's talk about who is needed at farms of various sizes to fulfill all these five and a half blocks of processes. Let's start with a small-scale farm. And first of all, what is a small farm? Well, it's probably up to 10 tons of grout fish per year, maybe up to 15 tons of sturgeon and trout, and up to 30 tons of African catfish. Typically, because it's a small farm, everything is done entirely by the owner. Or maybe, as at this farm, the owner involves some workers, but not permanently. For example, for sorting fish, for some cleaning. In any case, the owner should have some days off. This can be family members or just some hired employees coming and going. The second option is the average scale farm, probably from 25 to 50 tons of grout, sturgeon and trout, or up to 100 tons of African catfish per year. There is a rule, the owner plays the role of the general manager, that is, he looks after the farm, he is responsible for all sales. In addition to being the manager, he usually takes care of the sales. He has some kind of staff engaged at the farm. There is a biologist. This is the person who is responsible for the strategy associated with fish farming, for the result that the farm will reach in terms of production capacity. There is the chief engineer, the person who is responsible for the operation of all the equipment, because the biologist is an ichthyologist in other words, and he doesn't control the equipment. Often there is a hired director. There is at least one or even several sales managers and some support staff, like a cleaner and logistics managers, a driver and of course an accountant. This is the stuff that is required at a more or less large farm from 50 to 100 tons. Now let's talk about the final option. This is a mega farm. 
let's call it so conventionally. From 200 to 300 tons of sturgeon and trout, and from 500 tons of African catfish. There is a rule. The owner acts solely as an investor. There is a hired director, sometimes his deputy. There is a chief biologist and the biologist's assistant. The chief engineer as well as other workers, electricians and plumbers who can fix any problem of any equipment unit, any pipe, any electrics, if suddenly there is an accident. There are operators, and often not four, but even eight. They work two per shift. These are biologists on duty. There are two or three of them. There may be even more, depending on the level of the farm automation. And of course, the support staff is also needed. As a rule, there is a sales department. And the rest of the administration staff, such as accountant, financial manager. That is, at a farm with a capacity of 200-300 tons of sturgeon per year. The amount of staff is extensive, of course, and at least 15 people work there. Why am I telling you all this? So that you understand that the size of the farm is very much related to the number of staff you need to support all the processes. And now let's talk to you about whether it's possible to reduce the number of staff. I know a lot of cases, mostly in Europe, where labor is very expensive and equipment is relatively cheap, where automation comes to the fore. They try by all means to reduce the amount of manual labor. And I have even seen farms where they grow 2,000-3,000 tons of grout fish a year, and they just lock the farm at night and leave, and that's all due to the level of farm automation. So let's talk about automation. What can be automated, and is it even necessary? But I will tell you honestly, it makes no sense to do it at a small-scale farm, at a mini rest, because there is you as the owner, and that's all about it. Either you find someone, and he will do nothing, or he will work hard, but he still has to be at the farm to control everything. Therefore, if we are talking about a more or less average or large-scale farm, Automation is needed. The first is the operation of equipment, switching the pumps on and off, switching the operating and standby units, alarms, sensors in the system, level sensors, oxygen sensors, that is all the infrastructure and water parameters. All this can be automated with the help of special systems. Second, it's possible to automate the feeding process. There are automatic feeders, which are in fact semi-automatic. The feed is manually poured into the bunkers, and then they dispense feed according to a preliminary set program. This works well at small farms. It works differently at larger farms. A centralized feeding system is set up. The feed is dispensed to each tank automatically. That is, from the central hopper, the feed is distributed to the whole farm. The next process that can be automated is the movement of fish. At large farms, like feeding automation, this is simply necessary and mandatory. Imagine, you farm 500 or 1000 tons of fish per year. You need to move to transfer the fish, but you are not going to carry it by cart. There is a special system of fish discharge from the tank. Fish pumps, certain units, which sort fish automatically by gradation. Fish counters, which count how much fish go through the sorter. An automatic shipment system. And the last is accounting. That is, if it is small form, as a rule, all accounting is restricted to Excel files or is done on a piece of paper or a simple log. Then in a large, the approach is completely different. There is a special software that brings together all the parameters of the system, records them, keeps a log, keeps logs of feeding, works out the forecast of the required amount of feed, which should soon be given to fish. In fact, it collects all the data and properly distributes it. So why do we keep on talking about large-scale farms? That's cool, of course, but let's talk about a small farm, which is where I am now, which also has its own processes. I presume it would be interesting for you to see them live. So now let's consider which processes exist at a small-scale rest farm. Now we're just going to shoot everything that's going on here, and I'll comment on that. Well, the first and most important process that we have here is feeding fish. How does it happen? The fish farmer, in this case the owner of the farm, comes up with a bucket, takes it manually from the bucket and throws, spreads it to the tanks. Now he feeds the fish manually. There are automatic feeders. When he leaves, he fills them and can peacefully leave the farm. This is the first process that is indispensable – accounting and feeding. 
The second process is measuring water parameters. How does that happen? A water sample, or even several samples, are taken from the system, and the nitrogen group is also measured. That is preliminary ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. And now we need to understand which substances are contained in the water. Also, of course, temperature. Oxygen is not measured at African catfish farms, because it doesn't make sense. And surely pH. All of these indicators are locked. The next process that takes place here is fish sorting. We won't see it now because it happens once a month, or once every two months. So we came to the farm not at the moment to see that. The owner involves workers to help sort the fish. All this happens at a small farm manually. Further, they have to catch the fish and ship it out. The farmer scoops up fish with a net, fishes it out of the tanks, throws into a bowl, goes to the scales and weights it, and generally ships it out. If necessary, he guts it and puts it on the ice, the next process is observing and monitoring the system, that is, how REST system operates. When you have got used to the system, when you and the REST system are coherent and integrate whole, everything is intuitive. The farmer already understands what to look at, what to pay special attention to, what is necessary. There is some sort of drainage of sediment from the sedimentation. Settling tanks, there are some measures and processes, for example, regarding biofilters. But nevertheless, in fact, the equipment doesn't require any serious maintenance. Once a year, or every two years, it's necessary to replace the drum filter mesh, and once a year to replace the lamp of the ultraviolet disinfection unit. And probably the last processes that we need to consider at this farm are record-keeping. What is necessary? You feed the fish, keep record of the parameters in the log or Excel files. You prepare the fish for dispatching, account for the dead fish, measure the system parameters, put it in the log so that you have a full record, so that it's clear how much fish eats, how it grows, and so on. Also electricity consumption of utility lines, electricity and heating, so that you could calculate the economics of the farm. I'm not mentioning stocking now. It's when you order fry, it's delivered to your farm, you transfer the fry to the tanks, then sort it. It happens once a month or once every few months. That's pretty much it. These are all the basic processes that are taking place at a mini rest farm where African catfish is grown. By the way, I have a little bonus for you. It's a stuff register that you will find more detailed information than you have got from the video. And you can download it following the link in the description. Download it, review it. It contains more detail on every position that might be at farms of different sizes. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful. If so, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, a channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!